Sure, here's a simplified version, The Fugitive, a famous TV series from the 1960s, was a big hit. It's about Dr. Richard Kimball, who's wrongly accused of killing his wife. He's on the run, trying to find the real killer, a one-armed man. The show is exciting with lots of chases and drama. What makes it special is the interesting characters and the moral questions it asks. Now, let's talk about why this show is still remembered. It has funny, surprising, and sad facts that fans love to learn about. So, stick around for an emotional roller coaster. Also, tell us who's your favorite actor from the show and what do you think makes it so memorable. Share your favorite memory or experience with the show, too. Your stories are important to us. In The Fugitive, Richard Kimball is running from the law, meeting different people, and facing various situations in 120 episodes. The series has great acting, interesting guest characters, and good music, sometimes taking ideas from other popular shows of the time. It's filmed in cool places with famous cars from the 1960s, and the stories are well-written with different settings. Episodes like The End Game, Conspiracy of Silence, and Second Sight are especially good because of their unique stories and memorable scenes. Even the not-so-great episodes are interesting because of all the famous guest stars from the 1960s. If you like 1960s sci-fi shows, you might see some similarities to The Time Tunnel, Land of the Giants, and The Outer Limits in The Fugitive. It's a crime show that's worth watching, giving you suspense and excitement like a special journey through the Twilight Zone. The Fugitive, a TV series from the 1960s, featured Richard Anderson, who notably portrayed Oscar Goldman in both The Six Million Dollar Man and The Bionic Woman concurrently. This achievement is rare, with only a handful of actors like Leo G. Carroll, Martin E. Brooks, David Hasselhoff, and Fred Thompson having done the same. William Conrad, buried at Forest Lawn, Hollywood Hills in the Lincoln Terrace, Plot 44 and 48, lies among fellow TV detectives such as Telly Savalas, George Savalas, William Talman, Wesley Lau, Ray Collins, and Jack Webb from shows like Kojak, Perry Mason, and Dragnet. David Jansen, known for his role in The Fugitive, contributed a turkey pot pie recipe to Diana Millet's cookbook, I'd Rather Eat Than Act, his co-star from The Middle Man. Throughout the making of the show, David Jansen worked really hard, putting in long hours each day and missing out on social events. He was super committed to the project, and you could tell by how much he worked. The last season was different because it was the only one filmed in color, which made the series even more interesting. In the UK, Granada TV suddenly stopped airing the show halfway through, leaving fans confused and upset. But then something surprising happened 600 Liverpool factory girls got together to form a group. They worked together to convince the company to start showing the series again, and they succeeded. This showed just how much the fans loved the show and how they were ready to do whatever it took to keep it going. The Fugitive, a TV series from the 1960s, featured actors Bill Raish and George Kennedy, who also appeared in Lonely Are the Brave. It was the first series to wrap up all plot lines and questions in its final episode. In the opening credits, a train derailment sequence with the words Kem and Defer was taken from The Young in Heart, a film starring Janet Gaynor and Douglas Fairbanks Jr., produced by David O. Selznick and released by United Artists. Gaynor is among the figures walking away from the train alongside older woman Minnie Dupree. David Jansen, famous for starring in The Fugitive, had anti-Vietnam War views even though he appeared in the Green Berets in the late 1960s. This made some people think he supported the S in the war, but his personal beliefs were different from his professional roles. In season two, episode 11 of the series, Ron Howard, who later became a successful director, directed an episode featuring Robert Duvall and Kurt Russell. Duvall, a skilled actor, was considered for the role of Dr. Hannibal Lecter in The Silence of the Lambs, but lost to Anthony Hopkins. The episode, directed by Howard, showed Duvall and Russell's talents, hinting at their future success in the film industry. Despite Jansen's role in the Green Berets, his anti-war stance was well known among colleagues and fans, highlighting the challenges actors faced during politically charged times. This trivia reveals the different aspects of actors' careers and their personal beliefs, demonstrating the complexities of the entertainment industry. Edward Asner, well known for playing Lou Grant on The Mary Tyler Moore Show, also starred in Lou Grant. He showed he could do serious roles as well as funny ones. The train in the opening credits wasn't American, it was French. This fact adds to the show's cool design. David Jansen played Dr. Richard Kimball in the series and did a great job. The show is still loved today because it's so exciting and the characters are interesting. 
That's it for now. The Fugitive, aired in the early 1960s, features notable actors like Lawrence Naismith, whose grandson Woody Naismith is making strides in acting. Telly Savalas, known for portraying brutish criminals, transformed his image in the 1970s with roles like a homicide detective in Kojak. Contrary to some claims, there were no plans for an alternate ending where Kimball reveals himself as the killer. Barry Morse, co-star of the show, debunked this rumor, mentioning a gag idea with a false arm. Morse and David Jansen, who played Kimball, whimsically discussed an epilogue where Kimball wakes up next to his wife, revealing it all as a nightmare. Jansen's idea for the finale involved Kimball on a beach, learning the one-armed man's fate, then symbolically removing his prosthetic arm and walking off into the surf, leaving viewers to ponder his future. The ABC executives had initial objections to concluding the series due to concerns about potential syndication profit losses. David Jansen, who has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, has his star placed near the Chinese theater. The dedication of the star coincided with his mother's birthday in 1989, situated in front of his favorite childhood ice cream shops. Robert Duvall, the middle brother among three, saw both his elder brother William Duvall and younger brother John Duvall appearing as singers in his film Angelo My Love. In the TV series The Fugitive from 1963, several actors appeared more than once. Some of them were Lois Nettleton, Kurt Russell, Peter Richmond, Richard Anderson, Ed Begley Jr., and Paul Richards. Edward Asner, who won an award in 2017 for his performance in a podcast called Powder Burns, played a cowboy dealing with Alzheimer's disease in the show made by David A. Gregory. Dabney Coleman, famous for his role as Burton Fallen in The Guardian, also did important work on the series. In the show The Fugitive, there's a memorable detail where guest actresses unknowingly praised Bill Raish for his special effects and faking a missing arm. Surprisingly, Raish only had one arm. This unique aspect added an interesting twist to the behind-the-scenes dynamics. Shirley Knight, a significant figure in the series, encountered an interesting situation while filming The Rain People in 1969. She finished her scenes while being six months pregnant with her daughter Sophie C. Hopkins. This adds a personal touch to Knight's contribution to the show. Furthermore, Knight's character, Natalie Ravena, inspired the runaway narrative of Dollars in the short film Silent Sigh in 27. The influence of Knight's portrayal on later artistic works demonstrates the lasting effect of the fugitive on the creative world. These interesting stories give a peek into the subtle complexities behind the scenes of the show, offering viewers a unique perspective on its production and ongoing influence. The Fugitive, a TV series from the 1960s, featured notable actors in various roles. Robert Duvall, known for his roles in acclaimed films, appeared in eight Oscar-nominated films, including The Godfather and Apocalypse Now. He won Best Actor for Tender Mercies. Edward Asner portrayed the character Lou Grant across four different series, including The Mary Tyler Moore Show and Lou Grant. Dabney Coleman's involvement in a film titled The Glory Road faced setbacks, leading to its eventual bankruptcy and abandonment. Despite these challenges, The Fugitive remains a notable piece of television history. In television history, The Fugitive made a big impact in 1963. The show's lead actor, David Jansen, suffered a sudden heart attack and passed away. His wife, Danny, called for help early in the morning, leading to a quick response from emergency services. Jansen was rushed to the hospital, but was pronounced dead upon arrival. The autopsy revealed that Jansen's heavy smoking had damaged his lungs and mouth, while his liver showed signs of alcohol abuse. The main cause of death was a heart attack, likely due to years of smoking. Another actor from The Fugitive, Joseph Campanella, had sons who formed a psychedelic rock band called The Quarter After. Telly Savalas, also part of The Fugitive cast, shared a birthday with Benny Hill, who famously imitated Savalas' character from another show called Kojak. The Fugitive not only made its mark as a pioneering series, but also influenced the lives and careers of its cast members in various ways. David Jansen, known for his role in The Fugitive, was under contract at Universal International in the 1950s. He attended acting classes there alongside Clint Eastwood. Jansen and Eastwood became acquaintances during this time. Interestingly, Eastwood briefly dated Jansen's widow, Danny Crane. Val Avery, another actor in The Fugitive, portrayed a bartender in several other films, including The Night of the Meek, The Hallelujah Trail, No Way to Treat a Lady, Identity Crisis, and Easy Money. 
Edward Benz, who appeared in The Fugitive, was known for his roles in films directed by Sidney Lumet. He featured in movies such as Twelve Angry Men, Fail Safe, Love and Molly, and The Verdict. These actors brought depth to The Fugitive and showcased their talent in various other productions throughout their careers. The Fugitive, a TV series from 1963, featured David Jansen, whose mother and both sisters made appearances as extras. Lawrence Naismith, known for his roles in Village of the Damned and Quest for Love, starred in the show. Telly Savalas, who played two Alcatraz inmates in different films, also appeared in The Fugitive. These actors brought unique experiences to the show, enriching its cast and storylines. Edward Asner, recognized for his role in The Fugitive, portrayed Santa Claus multiple times in various productions. He played the character in Elf, The Ellen Show, Olive, The Other Reindeer, The Story of Santa Claus, A Story About Christmas, Santa Stole Our Dog, A Merry Dog on Christmas, and in episodes of Regular Show and Highway to Heaven. Eileen Hickart won the Best Supporting Actress Oscar for Butterflies Are Free at the 45th Annual Academy Awards on March 27, 1973, making her the 72nd actress to receive this accolade. Richard Anderson, also associated with The Fugitive, made television history when the bionic woman moved to NBC for the 1977-78 season. He was the first actor to reprise the same role on two shows airing on different networks. These actors, each with their distinctive contributions, made significant impacts on the entertainment industry. Edward Benz, known for his roles in acclaimed films like Twelve Angry Men, Judgment at Nuremberg, Patton and the Verdict, also made a notable appearance in The Fugitive. Benz brought his seasoned acting skills to the series, contributing to its overall quality. Dabs Greer, recognized for his role as the army chaplain in The Dick Van Dyke Show, officiated the on-screen weddings of two iconic television couples. Additionally, in The Brady Bunch, Greer portrayed the minister who solemnized the union between Mike and Carol Brady. Notably, The Fugitive featured William Shatner, DeForest Kelly, and James Doohan in its cast before they gained fame in Star Trek. The show served as a precursor to their later prominent roles in the iconic sci-fi series. These connections with seasoned actors and the crossover of talent from The Fugitive to other well-known shows highlight the significance of this series in shaping the television landscape. In the early 1960s, Roy Huggins, inspired by a moment of inspiration, conceived the idea for a TV series. He captured this moment by having his wife take a photograph, which he then hung over his desk for the rest of his career. The role of Richard Kimball, the protagonist, underwent considerations from actors like Robert Lansing, James Franciscus, and Anthony Franciosa. Bruce Dern, notable for his appearances alongside Jack Nicholson in multiple films, appeared in several notable projects during this time. The Fugitive captivated audiences with its gripping narrative and compelling characters becoming a classic in television history. The Fugitive, a TV series from 1963, gained immense popularity, sparking unique ideas like a German magazine's contest to have David Jansen, the lead actor, stalked by its readers in West Berlin streets. Edward Asner stands out as one of two individuals to win Emmys in both drama and comedy categories for portraying the same character. He played Lou Grant in The Mary Tyler Moore Show and in Lou Grant. Similarly, Yuso Aduba achieved this feat for her role in Orange is the New Black. Richard Anderson, another actor from the series, had an interesting connection to reality. In The Six Million Dollar Man, his character was part of a government department called the OSI. Anderson himself did an orientation video for a real government department also named OSI, though vastly different from the fictional one. Dr. Richard Kimball, while on the run, took on various jobs like truck driving, chauffeuring, delivering, operating merry-go-rounds, mending sails, bartending, picking fruit, janitorial work, assisting veterinarians, and sitting with invalids. Eileen Heckart reprised her role as Flo Meredith on Lou Grant, originating from the Mary Tyler Moore Show alongside Edward Asner. The series was immensely popular in Ireland, with nearly every town deserted during the final episode's screening. The TV series The Fugitive, popular in the 1960s, was loved by many for its exciting story and memorable characters. It starred Telly Savalas and later his brother George Savalas, becoming an important part of TV history. Interestingly, a sci-fi novel called Prison Satellite had similar themes and suspense, adding to the excitement for fans. Barry Morse, a key actor in The Fugitive, had a strange experience while eating at a restaurant in London. 
he met someone who resembled the character he played on TV, making his experience feel surreal. Stories like these make The Fugitive even more interesting, showing its impact beyond just being a TV show. These tales, mixing fiction with reality, show how The Fugitive continues to be loved, affecting both viewers and those involved in making it. Indeed, the influence of The Fugitive goes beyond just entertaining people, leaving a lasting impression on popular culture for many years. In the American Deep South, a group of convicts on a chain gang once threatened to riot when a warden suggested halting their viewing of the TV series The Fugitive. Edward Asner, known for his roles in Spider-Man, the animated series, and the spectacular Spider-Man, provided the voice for J. Jonah Jameson and Ben Parker, respectively. Val Avery, who appeared in several films directed by John Cassavetes, also had a role in The Fugitive. He featured in five of Cassavetes' movies, including Too Late Blues and Gloria. These actors brought their talents to The Fugitive, enhancing the show's appeal and contributing to its success. The Fugitive, a TV series from 1963, featured Telly Savalas, who battled bladder cancer that had spread to his hip bones and pancreas. He refused the recommended radical cystectomy procedure. Ken Wilhoyt, the series' music editor, was married to Susan Seaforth Hayes, who had an affair with Dr. Sam Shepard, a figure believed to have inspired the show and who testified against him. Shirley Knight, known for winning a Tony Award in 1976, starred in the series. She also received a Tony nomination in 1997. The Fugitive, a 1963 TV series, garnered attention beyond television, appearing in Mad Magazine as The Fugitive. Notably, Shirley Knight earned a 1977 Joseph Jefferson Award nomination for Guest Artist for her performance in The Landscape of the Body at the Academy Festival Theater in Chicago. R.G. Armstrong, a hunting buddy of high school classmate A.M. Leonard, shared a familial hunting tradition dating back to their father's hunts in Birmingham, where hunting was vital for sustenance. Armstrong's upbringing influenced his portrayal on the show. Eileen Heckart, known for her roles in Butterflies Are Free and Love and War, stands as one of three actresses to clinch both the Best Supporting Actress Oscar and the Outstanding Guest Actress in a Comedy Series Emmy. The other accomplished actresses sharing this distinction are Cloris Leachman and Melissa Leo. Despite The Fugitive's various remakes, none involved QM Productions or its successor companies. Warner Brothers took charge of all the remakes as Keith Barish, departing from Taft Broadcasting in 1979, took the remake rights with him. These rights eventually landed at Warner Brothers, while the original series rights passed through Spelling Television, Paramount Television, and CBS Studios. In the book The Fugitive Recaptured, it's revealed that ABC had plans to film episodes in Mexico, Puerto Rico, and Hawaii in 1966. This idea aimed to materialize in the show's originally planned fifth season. However, David Jansen, the lead actor, opposed it due to physical exhaustion from the demanding shooting schedule. Additionally, ABC considered introducing a young son for Kimball in the fourth season to attract younger viewers, but this plan was abandoned after recognizing its impracticality in light of Lieutenant Gerard's presence. The proposed international filming and the introduction of Kimball's son never materialized, shaping the trajectory of The Fugitive in a different direction than initially planned. The Fugitive, a TV series from the 1960s, showcased various talents. Shirley Knight, for instance, returned to work shortly after giving birth to her daughter Sophie C. Hopkins to perform in the Broadway play The Watering Place. R.G. Armstrong, after meeting writer-director Sam Peckinpah on the set of his 1960 series The Westerner, appeared in several of Peckinpah's films, playing diverse roles. Telly Savalas received recognition from New York City in 1990 for his role in the Marcus Nelson Murders, which introduced his famous character Lieutenant Theo Kojak, later featured in the spin-off series Kojak. The Fugitive, a TV series from 1963, featured Telly Savalas, who later played Ernst Stavro Blofeld in On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Eileen Heckhart, praised by Marlene Dietrich, faced Hollywood typecasting. She dealt with being put into certain roles repeatedly, a common struggle for many actors at that time. David Jansen, known for his work in Checkmate and Route 66, became famous as Richard Kimball in the series. His portrayal of the wrongly accused Dr. Kimball captured the hearts of audiences, establishing him as a leading man in television. Following the success of the show, its cast members went on diverse paths in entertainment, showing their versatility. They played important roles in shaping film and television. Each member's journey was unique, 
adding to Hollywood history. The show remained significant as a reminder of the talent in its episodes. Many cast members achieved big milestones, leaving a lasting impression on entertainment. Their collective influence shows the impact of The Fugitive on their careers. Looking back, The Fugitive not only thrilled audiences with its story, but also helped launch the careers of its talented cast. Their accomplishments in the industry solidify the show's place in television history as a classic celebrated by fans worldwide. This quick look highlights the lasting significance of those involved in bringing The Fugitive to life. The Fugitive, a TV series from 1963, featured Telly Savalas, who met Marilyn Gardner at the Garden City Theater Center before his acting career took off. The instrumental theme song of the show bears resemblance to When I Fall in Love by the Letterman, especially in slower, mournful versions played over certain scenes. Edward Asner, the last original cast member of the Mary Tyler Moore show to pass away, was also part of the series cast. In the 1960s, The Fugitive made its mark on TV history. Interestingly, Telly Savalas was considered for a role in another famous movie, but his fear of flying prevented him from getting there on time. As a result, Paul Newman ended up taking the part. Additionally, Dabs Greer, known for roles related to Death Row in other movies, appeared in the show. In its final episodes, the series incorporated music from various sources, enhancing its atmosphere. Despite some composers not receiving credit, the show remains a classic beloved by many. The Fugitive, a TV series from the early 1960s, was really popular, especially its finale, which had the highest ratings on TV until Dallas came along with the Who Shot J.R. episode. The main character, Richard Kimball, originally ran away from his hometown in Wisconsin. But they had to change it to Indiana because Wisconsin didn't have the death penalty for murderers. Robert Duvall, a well-known actor, was in eight movies that got recognized by the National Film Registry for being important culturally, historically, or artistically. These movies are To Kill a Mockingbird, Bullet, Mash, The Godfather, The Conversation, The Godfather Part II, Network, and Apocalypse Now. In short, The Fugitive was a big deal in TV history, especially with its amazing finale and the change in its setting, showing how the show could adapt to real-world problems. The TV series, The Fugitive, inspired by Victor Hugo's Les Miserables, features a protagonist, Richard Kimball, who resembles Jean Valjean. Both are fugitives evading the law, with Kimball constantly moving to avoid capture, akin to Valjean's escapades. Pursuing Kimball is a character named Gerard, drawing parallels to Inspector Javert from Hugo's novel. Geraldine Brooks, whose father is James E. Strook, president of the Strook Theatrical Supplies Company, appears in the series. Robert Duvall, known for his role in the series, invested $5 million into The Apostle after facing rejections from various studios. Lois Nettleton, nominated for Broadway's 1976 Tony Award as Best Actress for They Knew What They Wanted, was part of the 1963 TV series The Fugitive. Dr. Kimball, the protagonist, had impressive credentials. He attended Cornell Medical School, interned in New York, studied at Guy's Hospital in London, and did his residency at Memorial Hospital in Chicago. Throughout his time as a fugitive, he faced numerous challenges, including being blinded by an explosion, hit by a car, knocked unconscious multiple times, and stabbed on four occasions. He survived 30 fights, three concussions, eight gunshot wounds, amnesia, pneumonia, and the advances of many untrustworthy women. Despite these hardships, he persisted in his quest for justice. The Fugitive, a TV series from the early 60s, featured notable actors like Edward Asner, Robert Duvall, and Dabs Greer. Asner, who passed away in 2021 at 91, had Gavin McLeod, his former co-star from the Mary Tyler Moore Show, pass away just months before him. Duval, known for his roles in various Oscar-winning films, has acted alongside eight Oscar-winning performers. Greer, whose career began in the late 30s, reminisced about his early days as a film extra, recalling the pay of $5 a day as significant for that era. The Fugitive, with its ensemble cast and compelling narratives, remains a classic in television history. Lois Nettleton, born to Edward, and Virginia Nettleton held the title of Miss Chicago in 1948 and reached the semifinals at the Miss America pageant the same year. Moving on to Joanna Moore, her grandson Kevin McEnroe, the child of Tatum O'Neill and John McEnroe, authored a novel titled Our Town in 2015. The protagonist's name in the novel Dorothy happens to be Moore's actual first name. 
As for the perspective of Barry Morse, after wrapping up the initial show, he walked alongside David Jansen and questioned the longevity of their involvement, pondering whether they would secure more than a couple of weeks' work. These behind-the-scenes anecdotes provide glimpses into the lives and thoughts of the individuals involved in the production, shedding light on their experiences and uncertainties. The narratives surrounding Lois Nettleton, Joanna Moore, and Barry Morse offer a unique insight into the dynamics of the team during the early days of the series. The Fugitive, a television series from the 1960s, starred David Jansen, who was praised by Patrick Mackney as the best television actor of his time. Edward Asner, one of the show's actors, made history as one of only three performers to win Emmy Awards across all three genres comedy, drama, and limited serious TV movie. The other two are Cloris Leachman and Yuso Aduba. Telly Savalas, known for his role as Pontius Pilate in The Greatest Story Ever Told, maintained his bald look, which became his signature style, blending elements of comedy and ominousness. This distinct appearance served him well throughout his career. The series remains a classic in television history with standout performances from its talented cast. The Fugitive, a TV show from 1963, is well remembered for its interesting characters and captivating storylines. In a 1993 interview, Jacqueline Scott talked warmly about her co-star, David Jansen, saying he was a friendly and sociable person with some interesting aspects. William Conrad, famous for his role in The Maltese Falcon, had a significant item from the movie which was sold for a lot of money after he passed away. Also, Robert Duvall, a well-respected actor, got nominated for an Oscar for his role in The Apostle. These things all add to The Fugitive being seen as a classic TV series. David Jansen, the lead actor in the TV series, affectionately referred to it as The Fuge. His portrayal of Dr. Richard Kimball in the show, which ran from 1963, gained significant popularity. Kelly Savalas, another actor associated with the series, met Angie Dickinson in 1971 during their collaboration in the movie Pretty Maids All in a Row. Nearly two decades later, they worked together again in Kojak Fatal Flaw. Despite the passing of Savalas in 1994, Dickinson and Savalas remained close friends throughout their lives. Lois Nettleton, an actress from the series, was the inaugural caller to Gene Shepard's late-night radio program on WRAM. Their on-air interaction led to Nettleton becoming a frequent guest known as The Caller. Together, they co-created a call-in radio show. These anecdotes provide glimpses into the personal and professional lives of the individuals associated with a series shedding light on the connections forged during and after their time on The Fuge. The camaraderie between Jansen, Savalas, and Nettleton extends beyond the screen, reflecting enduring friendships that persisted even after the show's conclusion. The Fugitive, a television series from the 1960s, featured notable actors in various roles. Robert Duvall, known for his roles in Apocalypse Now and The Godfather, portrayed an ancestor of Robert E. Lee in Gods and Generals. He shared the screen with Martin Sheen in Apocalypse Now. Bruce Dern, another familiar face, acted alongside his daughter Laura Dern and Samuel L. Jackson in several films including Django Unchained and Jurassic Park. Neil Saban, the programming mastermind of Medivy, lauded David Jansen's talent. Jansen, who appeared in every episode of the series, showcased his skill in almost every scene. The TV series The Fugitive, which aired in the 1960s, had some interesting stories behind the scenes. One interesting thing was how they often filmed in a fake hotel called the Edmund Hotel, making it seem like the main character stayed in lots of rundown places during his travels. Barry Morse, one of the actors, talked about how people in supermarkets would mistake him for his character and tell him to stop chasing the protagonist because they believed he was innocent. They thought the one-armed man was the real bad guy. Another actor, Dabs Greer, was in other movies where prisoners took over their surroundings, similar to what happened in The Fugitive. People still like The Fugitive today, and stories like these show how much it meant to viewers. Joanna Moore, known for her appearances on Alfred Hitchcock's TV show, faced a challenging time under Hitchcock's personal contract. Hitchcock attempted to change her appearance, but Moore resisted, leading to a strained relationship. This information is documented in the 1979 biography Hitch the Life and Times of Alfred Hitchcock by John Russell Taylor. Both Hitchcock and Moore were alive when the book was published and no objections were raised. Bruce Dern, an actor from the series, holds a unique distinction as one of the few who killed John Wayne on screen in The Cowboys. This portrayal resulted in Dern receiving death threats. 
Robert Duvall took on the role of Robert E. Lee in Gods and Generals when Martin Sheen couldn't reprise the role due to commitments to the West Wing. These behind-the-scenes anecdotes shed light on the experiences of actors associated with the series, providing a glimpse into the challenges and unique moments they encountered. The Fugitive, a TV series from the early 1960s, featured notable actors in guest roles. Telly Savalas, initially attending an audition to support a friend, impressed casting directors with his sinister demeanor, leading to various TV and movie roles. Robert Duvall, after studying acting under Sanford Meissner, appeared in productions like A View from the Bridge and Tomorrow at St. Mark's Playhouse. Richard Anderson, inspired by Gary Cooper's screen presence, pursued acting and underwent a screen test influenced by Cooper's work in The Cowboy and The Lady. These actors, through their distinct paths to stardom, contributed to the success of The Fugitive. Val Avery, born to M. Jurdich Dare Abrahamian and Arousiak Abrahamian, had an important role in The Fugitive. His family has roots in Armenia, with his father helping to start the Republic of Armenia and his mother being an Armenian actress. Robert Duvall, despite playing Lawrence Olivier's grandson in The Betsy, is actually only 23 years younger than Olivier. This age difference gives insight into their relationship on screen. Lois Nettleton, originally from Chicago but living in California for a long time, was buried in St. Raymond's Cemetery in the Bronx, New York. This choice for her final resting place adds interest to her life story. These actors, each with their own background and details, added to The Fugitive. The series is known for its interesting story and diverse cast, making it an important part of TV history.